Good morning, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. I'm just here this morning because I wanted to do a code review. Um, it's not, I, I've got a data set for COVID tweets with natural language processing, but it wasn't a competition. It was just a data set. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the code with you. And, um, I couldn't submit it to Kaggle because it wasn't a competition, but we'll go through the code anyway. And um, I used the techniques that I learned in this recent video that I watched on natural language processing. And we'll see what happens when I use the techniques that I learned with natural language processing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the problem statement. And I just made a really short problem statement saying this is a COVID-19 tweet focusing on natural language processing. So that's your problem statement. Um, I'm, I wrote the program in Kaggle's free online Jupyter notebook. So if you uh, want to do that, then you need to have an account with Kaggle to do that. And then after I created the program, I imported the libraries. So the libraries that I initially imported were NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. So NumPy is used to carry out numerical math, numerical calculations and also create numerical arrays. Pandas is used to create data frames and ma manipulate them. Matplotlib is a graphics library to create graphs, and Seaborn is a more sophisticated graphics library to create graphs. And then after I imported my libraries, and what I did was I loaded my data set. So I used OS library to go into the um, operating system and retrieve the data sets. And so in this particular data set, we had a train and a test file. So I read the data sets. I had some difficulties reading the data set, so I was a bit perturbed about that. And the reason why is because whenever I loaded, whenever I read the data set, it went into error. So I had to research it. And then so I had to put in this encoding right here. Encoding equals ISO. A859-1 and so that enabled me to actually read the data set and so it took me a while because it kept going into error and finally it worked. So I loaded up my train data frame and you can see that what we're going to be looking using is the original tweet and the sentiment and you can see that the sentiment <coughs> is an object and because the sentiment is an object then it's going to have to be converted to a numerical value in order to make predictions on it. Looked at the test set, the test set was exactly the same in this particular data set the test set had a sentiment as well so that's good because that means that we can make predictions on the test set and check those predictions whereas if it was a competition, the test set wouldn't be labeled. So we'd make our predictions and then we would submit it to um, Kaggle to um, score it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to combine our train and our test set. So combi equals train dot append test. And so now we've got one big data frame called combi. <coughs> Now we're going to define our target and drop sentiment. So target equals combi sentiment. Combi equals combi drop sentiment. Axis equals one. So we've dropped the sentiment from the data set. And the only um, column that we're really going to be using is the column that says original tweet. So now we're going to analyze our data set. And so we've used SNS Seaborn. Uh, to create a disk plot, and you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five sentiments. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the unique values from the target, because I wasn't sure exactly how many values there were, and you can see that there are five unique values in target. So we're going to encode the target 
And the reason why we're going to encode the target is because when we do uh, predictions, predictions won't work if it's not a numerical value. So we created a dictionary that had the values, the unique values in target, and I'm just going to replace those with a number. And then we map the dictionary into the column. So target equals target dot map, replace values target. Uh, we do a, a count, and we found out how many um, examples we had of each uh, categorical statement, of each object, and you can see the four was the most. So let's see what four was. Four was three. And four was positive, so it had positive statements. And then neutral is three, negative is two, extremely negative. So positive was the most. And then two was the next one after that. And so two is going to be negative. So you had positive and then you had negative. And then you had the others like a neutral, um, extremely negative, and extremely positive. We checked our percentages because you wanted to see what percentage of each category you had so you've got the percentages there so now what I did was I created a box plot and you can see the box plot and so um, starts out with one two three four five so there's your box plot so so you can get a better indication of the target as well so now what we've done is we've defined tweets. So tweets equals com v original tweet. Counted the words. It's million four eight nine one oh one. So now we're going to process and clean the text. We're going to import R E and we're going to import natural language toolkit of stop words, porter stimmer, and word net limitizer. Stop words equals set. Stop words dot words English. Stimmer equals Porter Stimmer and Limitizer equals WordNet Limitizer. So we're going to clean the tweets. So tweets equals tweets.string lower. And now what we're going to do is we're going to stem the text. We inserted some code in here to stem the text. We're going to limitize the text. We've inserted some code to limitize the text. We're going to remove special characters from the numbers. And then we're going to remove the hashtags as well. We're going to remove words less than three characters and greater than seven. And we're going to remove the stop words. And then we're going to count the words that we have to analyze. And it's 912.810. Now we're going to remove frequently used words. And we're going to count the words and it's 702.493. We're inserting an apostrophe dictionary, and this apostrophe dictionary is going to replace apostrophized, apostrophized words with non-apostrophized words. So we're going to do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a function and this function will replace words with another word. And then so what we're going to do is we're going to say tweets equals tweets dot apply lambda x look up dick x apostrophe dictionary. So we replaced all the apostrophized words with non apostrophized words. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the rare words and we're going to count. So here's your rare words. And then we're going to count that, how many words we have. And now we've got 648418. And so whenever we process the text and remove the stop words, removed all words, less than three characters and greater than seven, removed frequently used words, and removed rare words, um, the, uh, the number of words that we have to analyze has 
essentially been halved. So that's good. That means that the computer doesn't have to analyze as many words. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use Spacey, which is a natural language processing library, and Spacey works better than the SK Learn. So that's why I decided to use it. So we have to install Spacey. Then we have to download the English Dictionary. Now we're going to import Spacey and import Spacey.cli. Spacey.cli download in core web LG. LG means it's for a large data set. NLP equals Spacey.load in core web LG. So we've defined our NLP. So now we're going to token to vector. We're going to take the tokens and convert it to a vector. So import spacey, import in core web LG. NLP equals in core web LG dot load. Document equals NLP tweets zero. And then uh, then we're going to take sentence to vector using pipe. Document equals NLP pipe tweets. Tweets vector equals NLP array tweets dot vector for tweets in document. And then um, we look at the shape 44955 over 300. So that means you've got 44955 rows and 300 columns. Now we're going to normalize it. <coughs> and what happens when we normalize it is we're going to convert all of the values to a value between 0 and 1 because the um, model that I used wouldn't work if I didn't normalize it. Now we're going to define our x and our y variables. And because you had your um, label in the test file as well as the train file, I had to say y equals target. And then it was the len up to the length of train. And then y test equals target, the length of train to the end. x equals tweets vector up to the length of train. x test equals tweets vector from the length of train to the end and then you check your shapes and then so that was a little bit different from a normal competition because normally the train the, the test set wouldn't be labeled but in this instance the test set was labeled so you had to make allowances for that so now we select the model i decided to use extra trees classifier in this instance and I had 99, almost 100% accuracy when I trained and fitted the model. But when I predicted on the data set, I only had like a close to a 37% accuracy. So that indicates to me that the model was overfit. But I, I can't do anything about it. I tried several models and I decided just to stick with extra trees classifier. Use my confusion matrix, and so you can see the confusion matrix. You can see how, uh, in an ideal world, uh, this diagonal line here would have all had numbers on it, and everything else would have been zero. But because there were so many inconsistencies in the prediction, that's why you've got so many numbers in your confusion matrix. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the actual values to the prediction. So you can see that that didn't work out very well either. So this data set wasn't a good data set to work on. I mean, I could have used a lot more um, models, but I tried. I tried random forest. I tried naive base. I tried a lot of different models, and I just couldn't get it to work no matter what I did. But even so... Uh, the logic that I used to actually write the program was good and so like maybe you can try another data set like maybe try the disaster tweets data set and um, you might get a better result so let's see what happens so 
I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because I've come to the end of the code review and someone's supposed to be coming to my flat at 9.15. So um, I would like to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing to my channel and supporting me. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.